Hello and welcome to this weekend's episode of The Winning Post brought to you by Delton Casinos in association with the Serum Institute of India. As always there is a lot of racing action to catch up on. Let's start right at the top with the Karl Umrigger Trophy from the RWITC Mumbai. Last Sunday at the RWITC saw the running of the Karl Umrigger Trophy and the Rajkumar Gajadhar Memorial Trophy. First up was the Karl Umrigal Trophy over 1400 meters for maiden Indian horses aged 3 years. Pacey Shroff had a runner in Continental who would be ridden by DK Ashish in the hope of beating the much favored Velvet Amari from Malaysia Rarus Yard ridden by Trevor Patel. Both of them were making their first career start here and looked poised to battle it out on the turf to shed their maiden status. Imtia Say fielded Shadow Fax a son of multi-dimensional who was making his third career start he had run at the back of the field in his previous start the perset memorial over 1600 meters on march 7 and would be looking at improving on that performance with cs joda on board like continental and velvet amari avogad trained by nosher kama too was making her first career start and would be looking at nirel travel to guide her home and they're away and uh, racing for the Karl Umriger trophy a little lethargic at the start there is oscillation in avant-garde and as the field settles down getting straight down to business is the path to 1200 meter mark of Velvet Amari now been passed by Bitchstone Hill Bitchstone Hill setting up a nice solid pace from uh, Silvano in second Velvet Amari set back in third but it will be under shadow fax in the center hugging the rails there is uh, Continental as the path to 1000 meter mark remember the time making a forward move captivators improving down in the center then there's Jarama and oscillation both racing together as the party 800 meter marker shadow fax is on the near side they're running down to the entrance of the home stretch at bitstone is the leader from velvet amari in second silvano is in third regular behind is captivate shadow fax improving down in the center then just remember the time after that is continental heaven guard is the head turn for home round the turn and into the street bitstone hill comes in on first a length and a half in front of uh, velvet amari trying to make a forward move in second spot captivate is uh, coming up in between horses after that is shadow fax making a forward move but it is uh, a uh, bit stone lens shortening its stride from velvet amari galloping strongly but drifting out of a straight course shadow fax getting a nice opening in the center after that is remember the time silvano and uh, well uh, captivate on the far side but velvet amari from uh, uh, continental velvet amari continental velvet amari it's going to be from continental then the shadow fax even got remember the time silvano after that there is a bit stone hill jarama lost one home oscillation Continental landed an upset as he and Velvet Amari battled home strongly with Continental eventually emerging victorious with just half a length over the latter. Shadow Fax was in third. Next up was the Rajkumar Gajadhar Trophy, a class 3 race over 1400 meters which saw 11 horses come into the parade ring. Malaysian Reru had a runner in Speed King who was coming into the contest on the back of a win in the Midday Trophy over 1400 meters on January 18. and would be looking at continuing his winning streak with R Ajinkya on his back. The Rehanullah Khan trained Anjoli had run a disappointing race the last time out in the Dr Gulam Bahanwati Gold Trophy over 1200 meters on February 22nd and would be looking at improving on that form with Shreva Patel on board. The Imtia Said Strain Helping Hand had run 5th in the Japan Cup on February 28th over 1800 meters and would be looking at putting up a better performance this time out over the shorter trip with CS Joda in the saddle. Start as orders and away they go for the Rajkumar Gujadur Memorial Trophy off to even dispatch from the gates and as they settle down it is uh, on the outside 
Centaurus takes it up there. Centaurus from Quest for Love on the inside is Flanker, then comes Hail the King. Remus is also there in about fourth place. Cha 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 comes in next, Beyond Horizon. Then there is Speed King and Jolie on the inner is Beringo and Helping Hand in a close last as they go towards the 800 meters. Quest for Love is the leader now by about a length and a quarter from Remesis. Cha 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 running third, another two lengths away beyond horizons. On the inside is Centaurus, hidden up on the outside is Speed King, then comes Flanker. And Jolie about half a length away. Third last there is Hail the King up on the outside, Helping Hand and Beringo. Close last as they start negotiating the curve at the 600 meters. Quest for Love on the inside, Wales being joined on the outside by Remesis. Cha 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 is in third, Centaurus, Speed King. Flanker, then there's Beyond Horizons, Helping Hand, Anjoli, Beringo, and the others. Into the last 400 meters they go. It's Quest for Love still holding on with Speed King gathering momentum on the outside and taking up the running now. Speed King has gone ahead of Remesis. Then there is uh, Quest for Love followed by Anjoli, also looking good at the stage, followed by Helping Hand and Flanker. Into the last 100 meters they go, and it is Speed King being driven out there, clear by about three and a half, four from Anjoli. Speed King is the winner of the Rajkumar Gujadar Memorial Trophy from Anjoli, Helping Hand. Beyond Horizons flanker. Speed King lived up to his name as he crossed the finish line with two and three quarter lengths over Anjoli with helping hand in third. Rajkumar Gajadar's grandson, Naresh Gajadar, who flew in all the way from Mauritius, was up on the podium to give away the winning honours. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here from Mauritius. We are co-sponsors of this beautiful race that just happened, the Rajkumar Gajadar Memorial Cup. And my colleague Melissa and myself are here to promote Mauritius. You are welcome to visit us, to see the beautiful places we have to offer there. A special welcome to Domaine de la Bourdonnais, which is an heritage site with a beautiful colonial house, which can be visited. It has been open to the public. You can also come if you want to get married in Mauritius. You can organize corporate functions and you're most welcome to come and see us. After the Singapore Turf Club trophy at the RWITC on March 8th, it was time for the Singapore Turf Club to play host with the Royal Western India Turf Club trophy, Kranji Stakes C, on Sunday, April 5th which saw chairman of the RWITC, Mr. Kushru Danjiboy, in attendance on the big day. The contest over 1,600 metres on the turf, with the prize money of 80,000 Singapore dollars, saw 11 horses come into the fray. David Hill had fielded Husey, who was coming into the contest with a success record of four wins from eight starts, and not surprisingly, enjoyed the maximum share of support from the markets. He had run third the last time out in the Group 3, the Three Rings Trophy, over 1400 metres and would be looking at clinching top honours here with Corey Brown on his back. He would be opposed by In Fact from Pat Shaw's stables, who was coming into the contest on the back of a second place finish in the Group 3 Marceline Classic Stakes over 1800 metres and would be looking at going one better this time out with John Powell in the saddle. Laurie Laxon fielded Mr. Spielberg, who was coming into the contest on the back of three consecutive victories between 1,600 and 2,000 metres and would be looking at securing his fourth win on the trot with Baron Vosta in the saddle. And they're racing now, and Hughes, he just tipped at the start somewhat over near the rails, and away very nicely here is Empress Wu, and also going forward there is Dragon G out wide, power Nova and Musketeer wants to go forward, and it moves up on the outside of Empress Wu, Rider Valkyrie's away nicely, going up about fourth, and then Hughes, picking itself up, he's back fifth on the inside now as power Nova just goes back and looks for a position, one off the fence, further back behind those runners then, uh, Serpico, in fact, is one off the fence, a few lengths away, and just getting the head up there is Mr. Spielberg, going by is Billy Britton and given plenty of time to balance up there is Dujardin about three lengths away at the rear so a thousand metres to go and Musketeer leads out by a length and a half from Empress Wu and uh, sitting out three deep there is Dragon G as they now work off the far side Husey having a lovely run he's back fourth then Rider Valkyrie's about three quarters of a length away on the outside and fifth Serpico pushed along on the fence from Power Nova two and a half lengths away in fact then came Billy Britton a long way back as Mr Spielberg and Dujardin is a mile off them as they race up towards the 
the turn. 600 metres left to go now. Musketeer from Empress Rue. They're one, two. Dragon G on the outside. And then came Rider Valkyries. Husey's travelling very sweetly, but just needs a bit of room as they turn for home. It looks as though he might just about be in the clear here as they swing. And it's Musketeer quickly gobbled up there by Husey. Then we've got Dragon G. Then Power Nova. Rider Valkyries just a bit one pace at the moment. In fact, coming down the outside with also Mr. Spielberg. But Husey, he's been given a lovely run. About 100 metres to go. In fact, is charging at him now. It's Husey about a length and a half in front. In fact, goes into second, but a beautiful ride from Corey Brown. And it's Husey first from In Fact second, and third Mr. Spielberg from Power Nova. He's very tractable. You can do anything with him, put him anywhere you want to. And uh, Corey asked me how to ride him. I said, just put him in the box seat and and you should be all right there. And that's what he did. What's really enjoyable about having a horse like this, he's clearly thriving on the racing and he's going through the grades. You know, do you have any targets? Do you have any long-term plan for him? Well, the target obviously is the Derby because I think he's going to be a real stayer, this horse. And he's a real nice horse. And I think, like I said, the Derby, where we go between now and the Derby, I'm not really worried. I'd rather just go through the class twos, class threes, and let him win and go for the big one when I want to. What's he like back at home? Is he easy to work? Very, very sweet, sweet horse. Very nice. But he was a, he was a colt when I first got him. Oh, he, was a, he was a damn handful then. But now, we, after we gelted him, he's been a, he's been a gem. You know, he's a lovely, lovely horse. Yuzi justified his favorite tag as he romped home in a minute 35.60 with a length over in fact in second and Mr. Spielberg taking the third. Kushru Dhanjiboy gave away the winning honors to the connections and was presented with a memento for his presence. After the presentation honors, Mohit Lalwani caught up with the man himself who spoke about his experience being back in Singapore. It must be lovely to be back here in Singapore again, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Actually, I, uh, I think just when the new club had started, I owned the horse and I actually got a trophy presented here with a bottle of champagne. It's very nice. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, as far as the uh, continuing relationship between the Singapore Turf Club and the RWITs, it wasn't too long ago, Invitation Weekend, if I'm not mistaken, when we had the Singapore Turf or CN Warrior Weekend, where we had the uh, Singapore Turf Club uh, dignitaries come across. The, just talk us through what this relationship means. Well, it means a lot because I think it's something new that is happening. Uh, I, I hope we can build up a better relationship with the other racing centers also. And it's a good exchange, you know, I mean, it's a nice, uh, everyone wants to come to Mumbai and everyone wants to come to Singapore. So, you know, it turned out quite well. I was thinking whether we can advance that a bit more and need to sit down, put on my thinking cap and think what we can do. Well, one of the things that has been done is I know that the uh, uh, track manager from Singapore came across to Bombay and he came across to India and he had a look at the track and I believe he sat with some of our experts and uh, gave them some advice. Also, I think our tote manager came across from India to Singapore. So, you know, what are some of the initiatives that would be a priority for the RWITC to learning lessons to take from, from the Singapore Turf Club? Well, one very interesting thing that's happening now here is the uh, online betting. I think the government has just pro uh, you know, promulgated a law which will now permit Singaporeans to bet on uh, tote through an iPhone app. And I think that's the future, really. Can you imagine 1.2 billion people having, you know, something on WhatsApp and punting at the, at the race course? I think that's really something which I need to follow up with them and get their new law and maybe push our government to enact something like that. And outside of the racing, Singapore, you've been enjoying the delicacies, the food. I mean, that's what Singapore is known for, their shopping. Absolutely, absolutely. We had, we had some fabulous meals and I hope tonight will be the same. It's time for us to take a quick break here on the Winning Post, but do stay with us as we bring you all the action from Santa Anita Derby Day. As promised, let's head straight to Santa Anita Park was in contention for the Santa Anita Derby. The Kentucky Derby is possibly the biggest race in the United States. The run for the Roses, which is the first leg of the Triple Crown, ranks first in terms of attendance in America. While the race itself culminates in two minutes, the actual preparation for it begins months and even years before the big day. And one of the most important stepping stones to the race is the Santa Anita Derby. 
Since its inception in 1935, seven Santa Anita Derby winners have gone on to win the Kentucky Derby, California Chrome being the last of those, leaving no questions as to its importance. The Grade 1 race for three-year-olds is run over 1,800 meters on the dirt and holds a purse of one million US dollars. All eyes, however, were on the Bob Baffert train Dortmund, who was coming into the contest on the back of an unbeaten run with 5 for 5 in his racing career. He had picked up the Group 2 San Felipe stakes here, which serves as an important lead-up and looked like he would continue his unbeaten run with Martin Garcia on his back. His stable mate, one Lucky Dane, was coming into the contest, having run 6th in the Group 1 Breeders' Cup Juvenile and would be looking at improving on that performance with Rafael Bearano on his back. And Dortmund is striding on for home and Dortmund now gets a tap on the shoulder to kick away from them. One Lucky Dane crossed the line, Bolo on the outside, Prospect Park under pressure. Heads a turn for home in the $1 million San Anita Derby and Dortmund has opened up on them. And it's Dortmund gone clear now to lead it by four. Bolo down the center of the track. One lucky day in Prospect Park down at the rail. They're all chasing Dortmund, who's clear by five with a 16th to go. And Dortmund, another superb performance. Never looked like losing the San Anita Derby. Rumps to an easy win under Martin Garcia. Dortmund stretched his unbeaten run to 6 for 6 as he battled home hard to clock 1 minute 48.73 to take home the spoils. With four and quarter lengths over one Lucky Dane in second, handing trainer Bob Baffert a 1-2. Bolo was in third. Dortmund is owned by Kaleem Shah, son of former trainer S.M. Shah, and will now head to Churchill Downs for a shot at the Kentucky Derby and will be looking at becoming the first unbeaten winner of the Derby since his sire Big Brown won the Roses in 2008. The other big race on the day was the Group 1 Santa Anita Oaks for three-year-old fillies to be run over 1,700 metres. The race serves as a prep for the Triple Tiara, which includes the Kentucky Oaks. Seven fillies faced the starter for this contest this year, of which Stellar Wind was sent off favoured. The John Sadler chain filly had landed the Group 3 Santa Isabel stakes and looked poised to take this one home with Victor Espinosa in the saddle. Bob Baffert fielded Luminance, who was making only her third start here with two victories in the bag. She was stepping up in both trip and class and would be looking at Martin Garcia to guide her home. Richard Mandela had a runner in wild at heart who had run behind Luminance in their previous start and she too would be stepping up in trip and in class and would be ridden by Flavian Pratt. They run past a half mile pole and Luminance on the far side goes on. Glory down at the rail. Wild at heart is a joint third at the rail. Curlin's Fox. Light the city now being sent along as four off them. Now there goes Stellar Wind on the far side and Stellar Wind starting a run now. Stellar Wind, green cap on the far side going all the way up to second. Then back to Singing Kitty. They come to the quarter pole and Luminance is the leader but Stellar Wind has made this big run to take a run now behind that wild at heart they're at the top of the lane in the San Anita Oaks now and Stella wins she's made this big looping run and strikes the front luminance is in second past the eighth pole they come now and it's Stella win going greedily for the wire here and it's Stella wind an absolutely scintillating performance today Stella wind and Victor Espinosa could not have been more impressive in the San Anita Oaks Coming off an impressive win in her previous start, Stella Wind ran another impressive race as she rolled away to score a facile victory with five and quarter lengths over Luminance with Wild at Heart taking the third. Stella Wind is a daughter of Curlin and clocked 1 minute 43.26 to take home the spoils and land a berth in the Kentucky Oaks. It's time for us to slip into a quick break here on the Winning Post, but do stay with us as after the break we bring you a special feature on the Manjari Stud Farm. Welcome back to the Winning Post brought to you by Delton Casinos in association with the Serum Institute of India. Let's head straight over to the Manjari Stud Farm, the home of three champion stallions, Phoenix Tower, Arabian Gulf and Strong Suit. Okay. 
located 10 kilometers from the RWITC race course in Pune, is the Manjari Stud Farm. Originally started by Sir Sultan Chenoy and his partners, the farm is now charting new territories under Shopper Mystery since 1980. Spread over 110 acres, the farm has been home to several champion stallions in its verdant surroundings. The farm has produced classic winners and top quality horses with amazing regularity and there has always been a constant effort to keep up the high standards year after year. Currently, the farm stands three top stallions, Phoenix Tower, Arabian Gulf and Strong Suit. Phoenix Tower was brought to the start as a five-year-old. The Judmont bred son of Chester House and Bionic, the horse raced under the silks of Prince Khaled Abdullah. Racing-wise, he was unbeaten in three starts at two and three and went on to win the Earl of Sefton Stakes at four and subsequently went on to run second in four consecutive starts, the Lockinch Stakes, the Eclipse, the Prince of Wales Stakes and the Judmont International. As a stallion, Phoenix Tower has had multiple graded winners in India. His most recent winners include Mogadishu, winner of the Group 3 Shaparji Palanji Breeders Juvenile Colts Championship 2015 and Victoria Harbour, winner of the Group 3 The Ghoul as Poonawala Million 2015. Phoenix Tower's most successful progeny is perhaps Tatiana, trained by Dallas Storiwala. In the 2014-15 season, the filly has run second three times in the Vilu Poonawala Indian Oaks, the CN Wadia Gold Cup and the RWITC Limited Turf Championship. Arabian Gulf, a son of Sadler's Wells, out of 1,000 guineas winner wins, too, raced in Prince Khaled Abdullah's colours before coming here. As a stallion, Arabian Gulf has had less success in India as compared to Phoenix Tower. But with a pedigree like his, he is sure to produce some fantastic progeny in the near future. Strong Suit, the third stallion at the farm, by Rahi out of Helva, trained under Richard Hannon and was three-time Group 2 winner in England, with two victories coming at Royal Ascot in the Coventry Stakes in 2010 and the Jersey Stakes in 2011. Besides putting great thought behind its stallions, the farm has also very carefully planned its mare selection, with most of them being bought abroad. With 140 mares and an annual crop with 75 to 80 horses, the stud farm is no stranger to success. The reason behind the success and the quest for greater glory can be attributed to the passion of owner Sharper Mystery, whose desire to be at the top is the guiding philosophy of the stud farm that is constantly raising the bar ever higher. That's all we have time for on this week's episode of The Winning Post. Do remember, if you've missed anything, you can always catch us on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash winningpostracing. You can also like our Facebook page, as well as follow at Mohit Lalwani on Twitter for race day updates and more. We'll see you next week, and until then, may the horse be with you.